seriously guys, there has to be an element of urgency. This doesn't come around very often, right? 2008, these things happen every 10 to 15 years. So you've got to ask yourself, are you going to put yourself in a position to be able to take advantage of this? I'm going to share with you literally three things right now, three asset classes that you need to be aware of. But in order for you to take advantage of that passive income, you need to have the active income, which is exactly what I'm going to be talking to you about so you could take advantage. This is not something to be casual about. There needs to be urgency because you don't want to be one of the people that looks back in 15 years and go, I done nothing. I didn't want to sacrifice anything. I just let it happen and didn't take advantage of one of the biggest shifts in wealth in history. What is going on guys? Welcome back to part two of preparing yourself for the recession. We have a lot of requests for this, especially after the first episode. It's really brought out a lot of emotions and a lot of fear. And so you should be, because this is an opportunity. If you are not prepared, you will get crushed. It is as simple as that. Now, fortunate enough, I'm sharing something very valuable for you that is gonna help you get prepared. And I'm gonna be sharing with you three things that you need to be aware of so then you can focus and take advantage of them. And these are in the form of assets. Now, what you have to understand is price action doesn't just get to these areas and then just go straight away. You're going to see the difference in the chart work that I'll show you. Things recover quickly, things that recover, take, they take a little bit longer to recover essentially. But one thing is for sure, if you're not building an income, so if you haven't got something that actively builds income, so then you've got cash flow, how are you gonna take advantage of these things in the first place? Do you have a planning place for you to scale up your capital, right? You guys and girls are traders. You want to scale that up so you can take advantage of these things. You've got to ask yourself this. Imagine in another 10 to 15 years from now, because this doesn't come around every so often. It's anywhere between 10 to 15 years. Imagine looking back and going, I didn't do anything. I didn't take advantage of it. I still prioritized my holidays. Still didn't look at my finances. Didn't invest in myself. Didn't actually put the work in. Just wanted to relax and do the same old thing and you didn't have any urgency to do anything about it. Can you imagine, right? You're gonna look at your future self and then look at that person and say, what are you gonna do about it? It's as simple as that. This is not something that, you know, oh, in a year it'll come around again. It will not wait for you. It doesn't wait for anyone. And when I started in 2008, I wished and wished and wished. I was like, right, I'm going to make sure I'm in a position that if anything like this happens again, I'll capitalize on it. So let's get into the video, important things to cover. So we're gonna start off here with, you know, good old fashioned S&P. So if we take a look at the S&P on the weekly, right? We'll take a look all the way back. Bear it in mind, you have to understand some things recover quicker than others. Even if you look at this in 2020 for obvious reasons, everybody thought the world was gonna collapse, right? If you just look at this structure, everyone thought the world was gonna collapse and we was actually anticipating this hold here. It's a typical repetitive behavioral pattern to get people scared, caught on the wrong side, and then guess what? We create an all time high. Now, could we be in the midst of creating something else as well? Potentially, we'll see. We have to judge this day by day, but we have to be prepared. Now, if you look in 2007, before we had the crash, right, we trickle up, trickle up, again, very repetitive structure, no coincidence, we drop off, so we get the crash, and then look at how long it takes. So we're talking from 09 to roughly, you know, 11. So a couple of years to get over 50%. And what you have to understand is you don't need an all-time high to take advantage of something. You only need 40 to 50%. It's just in that recovery period that could take a year, two years, could take three years, could take six months. You need to be able to be positioned in that. And if you are, you'll make, you'll make so much more money in a six-month period or a year period that would normally take you five to six years. So you can understand why it's so attractive to be positioned there. So... Number one, stocks, right? So number one, you wanna be positioned to be able to get involved in some really low value stocks, right? That have that longevity, that have just sold off with the market. Still good stock, nothing is wrong with the company itself. And then you get involved in it because it's just a discounted price. So just quickly guys, if you're enjoying the content that we put out on the channel, make sure that you stay in the loop by commenting, subscribing to the channel, turn the notifications bell on so you're always in the loop of the content that we're pushing out on a regular basis. We appreciate the support and make sure you utilize the resources that we put out. So check all the links in the description. They will help you out massively on your trading journey. Right now back to the video. Now that's gonna be number one. So we can see this recovered, you know, a couple of years. You can make a lot of money in that period. This one here recovered very fast and then we move into an all-time high. That one was a little bit different because that wasn't so much of a market crash per se. 
So that's just the S&P, I'm gonna keep that one simple. Let's take a look at crypto, which is the next point, right? So there's three things here. What I want you to focus on is, and you can write this down, stocks, crypto, and property. Now, these things are really, really important. If you, if you seriously want to change the wealth gap of where you are now to where you wanna be, these three things alone will make you wealthy, right? Stocks, crypto, and property. Now you might be thinking, well, how can I get involved in all of these? Well, trading, right? Trade, learn the skill, acquire it, scale up your capital. You've got access to funding firms everywhere. We have our own in-house fund. There's a big reason for that because we can make sure that our students are actually protected and not just a number on the screen. However, scale up by all means necessary and then be in a position, liquid available capital to be able to invest when the time is right. Now, just make sure you're around people that know when the time is right. But BTC, look at the difference. So we got to roughly around 20K. Now, I remember this time, lots of people were buying and they were just getting in, doing the amateur thing where they just buy at the worst time possible because they have FOMO. Guess what? We sell off and then we recover 50% in not really a long period of time, right? We're talking not long at all. And then we break the 20K and this is the one I wanna to talk to you about. So. Once we hit our all time high at roughly 64, 65, roughly there or thereabouts, what happens? We move all the way down to 28, which became a little bit of a base. But how long did it take to recover from this area to here? How long did it take, right? We're talking four to five months. That's not a long period of time. So the point I'm making is that sometimes something can take a year to recover. Sometimes it can take four months to recover. Now what you can make from here to here is ginormous. So even the, us looking at this now, just from a mathematical point of view, by the way, just to give a bit of an insight into BTC. So if you just measure this impulsive run that we've got here, and then we put it to literally the top of the base, like so, it actually lines up with this unretested high at around 13 and a half. Now, what do I believe in terms of value areas to buy BTC here? Number one, number two, and number three. Of course, this would be the best opportunity to buy, but we may not get there. We will see, right? If we trickle our way there and reject, chances are we could wick through there, get some really good value prices. But on the other side of the coin, we could literally just wick there and you don't even have time to get involved and it just snaps back. Now this can recover, literally, a run like that can happen in four weeks. That's the difference, right? So you have to know what type of asset class you're dealing with. In in crypto, things can recover a lot quicker. So if you're positioned correctly, you can identify an opportunity. But if you've not been building cash flow, so imagine your trading's going really well, you're trading quarter of a million, for example, you're banking on average 20K per month, right? You're withdrawing it, you're stacking it up, stacking it up, you might put some into a personal trading account, you might put some into something else, and you've got some more left over, right? You could have 50K, let's say BTC is down at roughly around 13, or let's say it went to 10. Right, you could literally just put 50K into BTC at 10K per coin, and you would look back and realize that was a phenomenal price. There was no crazy skill involved. It was just identifying an opportunity, identifying a key value area that makes sense, looking at the all-time high and seeing just the, the laws of the market moving back in. Whether you was in that for like two to three years and the bear market took longer than expected, you're in at such a phenomenal price and you can keep averaging in, even if you don't have lump sum money, because you might be on the other side thinking, well, that's all well and good, but I'm not at that level of trading yet, so I don't have thousands every month. Okay, that's fine. More of a reason to have urgency to get your shit together and actually start learning the skill. On the other side, how much do you have per month? You gotta ask yourself, are you willing to sacrifice your bad habits that you won't let go of? Right, and that could be two, 300 pound a month, it could be alcohol, it could be cigarettes, it could be food, it could be pine, it could be, all different kinds of things, right? No judgment. The point I'm making is that you can't say on one hand, I wanna be wealthy and I wanna change my family's life, but yet you can't give up going out every weekend. You know, make your mind up. What do you actually want? Actions speak louder than words. So then it goes on to this. Even at 200 pound a month, 300 pound a month, 100 pound a month, don't underestimate the power of small numbers because you don't know how long something's gonna last. For example, yes, that recovered in four months. However, some things could take four years. And if you're positioned correctly, every single month you could average in. But you need a strategy and you need discipline to stick to it. So nice little gem there for you as well. That again, these are things that are not taught in school. You wouldn't know these things because you'll go, well, what's a hundred pounds gonna do or a hundred dollars? So I may as well not do it. 
wrong right that's not the right way of thinking you under that's like saying that you know and everybody else knows exactly when something's going to move they don't which is why you could look back and go right if i put 100 pounds into this stock and i've done it every single month for the last four years it took four years to go so you could have accumulated a decent amount and made money right so i digress a little bit however btc simple and then again another asset class that you can be prepared for now let's actually look on the weekly on you we can go through loads of different airlines right but let's look at united airlines right so united airlines what's really interesting about repetitive structure this is why we trade the way that we do is because it's actually battle tested through years and years through recessions war you name it so look at this this is a very typical structure that hits the override area so those that are in falcon will know what happens we get three touch doesn't hit the three touch gives us the override the internal structure sells off as expected We've got a correction just below the low, right? We break and then we start to recover. So how long do we take? So we're in 09, roughly 50%. Okay, decent. So that took a little bit longer, right? However, that's a good thing, right? You should actually thank yourself. Things recovering quickly is not actually in the majority of the population is not within your interest because most of you are not going to have quarter of a million just to put into one stock straight away, are you? However, if you're building a skill set, you can still be in a position where you could drop 25, 40K, 50K and spread it across and still do very, very well for yourself. The wealthy people that have already got liquid available cash will get involved in all of these things. And then guess what? We recover, you hold. So anyone who actually held from, let's say, 2012 onwards up towards this period, even there in a couple of years, very simple structure as well, as you can see, literally, you, you can't make this stuff up. Like the mathematics is there. And then we move to an all-time high and carry on going. And what's even more interesting is the actual sell-off from here. Look at the structure, right? What do we do? Same thing, right? No coincidence. Are we shocked that this sold off and hit the 90% rule before it started creating the deeper structure? Not at all. So you can go and test this through everything. Now remember, my original background and credentials is in stocks. So this is like bread and butter for me in the earlier stages. So I was very familiar with all of these things happening. I just didn't have the capital or experience at that point to actually do anything about it. Now I do, and now I wanna position other people to do the same, because it won't come around very often. So let's take a look at, we'll look at Bank of America. So let's take a look at this. Right, so same example in terms of structure price moving up unsustainable price action effectively we've called the big short here with just a simple basic pattern it's called the short right, as you can see sold off broke the low and then we start to create this kind of recovery formation right we get this kind of v and then we just go but what's important here is we stick around from 29 to roughly 16 so this one took a little bit longer sideways consolidation and then we break out now airlines are going to be useful so you've got to use like in a time like this you have to use your common sense for essentials as to what you want to be involved in you wouldn't look at say something like a stock right and look at airlines or banks and go right so bank of america is that going to be non-essential are we not going to use that well of course we are so you know that if you're in rock bottom prices from united airlines or bank of america and you're involved in any stock related things any sectors at all chances are you're going to get in at incredible prices so unless anything is happening to united airlines or any airlines for that matter that's a different story but generally speaking you know it's going to be useful so when the market recovers they recover with it so just pick a few sectors from my experience pick a few sectors you can either do airlines tobacco like whatever you want to invest in right so i'm going to show you a few other ones that especially we'll go to red row in a second right so from a property perspective so firstly let's take a look at wells and fargo we go to the monthly chart and we look back here so let's actually go weekly it's a lot clearer so on the weekly chart take a look at this same thing right we drop and then we push to the upside but how long do we take so we're looking from 2009 up to about yeah so not long at all right so we're talking under a year here of a recovery of from this point call it 75 or 80 percent 
So think about it from that perspective. Look how quick this recovered, but in a same sector, something else didn't, right? So banks that took a lot longer to recover. Look at this, look how quick that recovered. So you've got to understand that you can't just go into one thing. You have to have a diverse portfolio. You have to actually know, right, if there's an opportunity, I'm gonna have X amount and I'm gonna go, right, little bit here, little bit there, little bit here, but in a controlled, concentrated manner. It doesn't mean just pick 15 different stocks and hope for the best you know look at the sectors and these things this is the kind of opportunities that i'm going to be bringing to the table and sharing with the community just like i've shared particular cryptos that are on the earlier stages that have so much potential for the future same type of thing so just as a good example literally wells fargo just recovers so quickly and creates such a typical structure you couldn't make this up impulse correction continuation and if you measure the the pole of the move and you go to the base you get the first target and then you get the second target which conveniently lines up with a high before we started the sell-off so this is very simple things and, and people are still over complicating the technical picture hasn't changed never will price action is the same always has been there's small variations on the lower time frame that you know paint a picture however all in all structure works as structure so you can see that very clearly. Now let's actually look at, oh, this is an interesting one. All right, so if we look at Redrow. So if we're gonna look at the property market here. We sell off, right? So you see the structure, we sell off. And look at this consolidation period. Now this is the accumulation area that just carries on building up. So in that area, in that time, you gotta ask yourself, everything's sold off and the people that have got money will understand, well, the market will recover people are going to build houses there is a housing shortage naturally over the next five years chances are they're going to do very very well so what do you do you're either buying an asset itself in terms of the property or you're investing in a stock in a house builder redro for example literally you could have just got involved and you had what four years roughly yeah about four years yet get the breakout and you leave it and we're talking up until yeah 17. you just hold and leave the point i'm making is this it's one of those times in which that whether the recession is in now and we're in it or whether it is a year away from now or two years away from now it will eventually happen as historically this is what happened we have depressions in the market but like this is nothing new it's about you being prepared for it and it's the same psychological behavior that it was 30 40 years ago that it won it was then in 2008 and so on and it will continue the same way and what I want you to take from this is, if I just quickly show you with Redrow, by the way, so you see this accumulation zone there? To give you an example, that it works in currency as well. What can you see straight away? Same thing, right? You see that accumulation zone there? Right, just plays out, right, for about four years, same thing, and we break out. That's the same type of thing that we're looking for. So when you see something accumulate, accumulate, think about it like this. Let's say you, under, you, are, you have this knowledge now, right? So you've got knowledge. You're looking at the same sort of time frame that you're looking to break out what could you have done in four years right imagine you was just starting to learn to trade then could have taken you two years to become successful become profitable and then what you had another two years at decent capital to start investing so if you only focused on let's say trading forex and that's it and you trade a few other things here and there you might even trade a few stocks right you might be day trading or something however you have to have your money if you really want to be wealthy and financially free and have the freedom you have to be doing things that even when you're not doing something you you have your foot in the game right you've got skin in the game you've got your money working for you whether it be stocks whether it be crypto whether it be property or something else right there's there's more opportunities that are going to come but as you can see very simply it's about you being positioned so no one knows the answer as to how long something is going to take, whether it's Red Row, Bank of America, Air Canada, Air France, Emirates, who names it, British Airways. There will be so many things, Vodafone, that things will sell off naturally, but as long as the company is stable and you understand how to look at that and you're around those people, then you're fine. You'll be one of the ones that actually took action, had urgency. So, so this should be, the, this is the message I want for you is this, there's a time and a place in which I would normally say, listen, it takes as long as it takes. Trading is a difficult thing. It's not this easy thing that happens overnight. However, now is a time to knuckle down, which means you've got to holistically look at all of your life and go, right, write it down. 
in the last three months, where have you spent most of your time? What did you actually do in the last three months? Go through your calendar, go through your invites, and you say, right, I went on holiday, I went to this event, I done this, I went to the horse racing, I went to that, and you and you look and realize you're prioritizing all of these things, spending all this money on things that are not gonna move you closer towards financial freedom. But then on one hand, you tell yourself that you're this serious player in this game, but you've got no sacrifices apart from, yeah, but I do a lot of hours, that's not enough. It's not enough for you to make millions. And this is what I'm talking about. You being positioned to make that. Whether you make millions or not, you might make a few hundred thousand, but you can make enough to completely change your life and your family's life if you have urgency. So the key thing here is you never know how long something's going to recover from. However, if you're not in a position to take advantage of that, what's the point? People are so focused on, they say to me, Mark, I want to invest in property. I want to, make, I want to have passive income. But you have no active income right you've got no income that is coming in actively you're not doing anything about it then don't worry about the property at this stage focus on do you have the skill set to consistently extract profit from the market once you've got that you can take advantage of these opportunities my passion and tenacity and enthusiasm for this is at an all-time high because I've lived through this this is literally how I learned to trade I saw all got the manual right there I, I learned through this and I wished and prayed, right, I'm gonna be in a position to do this again. And thankfully, I've learned, got the experience, have the know-how, have the network, have the resources, have the capital, and can take advantage of it. The question for you is, are you gonna put yourself in a position, whether it's six months from now, a year from now, or even three years from now, are you going to put yourself in a position to trade enough to have the income to then make it passively? That's a question for you.